All right, I didn't show all of the installation stuff on the uh, last two axes of this DRO. A um, little bit of interest, but not a tremendous amount. So I went ahead and got them mounted because I'm anxious to get them mounted anyway. I still have to mount the head, which I think I figured out the, the uh, permanent mounting solution for that, but I don't have it up and running yet. Anyway, Z-axis scale. Used the same scales that I had. Um, just got it. Uh, drilled and tapped here at the bottom which is the same way I had it installed on the G1007 and then I just installed it to the faceplate here is all it's going to take. Uh, added a couple of clamps to lay my wires out a little more neatly and used a little more hot glue just to anchor them in place and it runs up here on the back to uh, to go to the reader. I thought you might find my y-axis mounting a little bit interesting because it's been a little bit of a compromise and I'll show it to you here in a minute. The Y travel on the G1007 was a little bit less than I have here on the, the uh, G0755. So the scale was a little bit short. And I looked through my stuff and was going to order a new head. The problem with the Schumatech DROs is the earlier 350s read the Chinese scale protocol. And which is why they were it was such a good option to mount them on, on machines. Because we could buy cheap, inexpensive... Chinese calipers and scales and hook right into the 350. Um, the problem is they changed the protocols on the on the Chinese scales or the import scales at some point in time after the the 350 was released. So they won't always read those those same scale protocols that the early uh, or that the Schumatech would originally read. So consequently, when you buy the the later calipers and the scales, a good portion of the time they won't read. Now, that was addressed and taken care of when they introduced the 550 and I believe whatever the intermediate model of the, the Schumatech model was because it was, the 550 for example was open source and it was designed to read some of those, those other protocols or you could set them up to read virtually all of the protocols from what I understand. So, I had the early calipers on this and, and the DRO 350 is what was on the G1007 and that's what I'm mounting here for now. Um, I mentioned earlier that I've got a couple of 550s and I will be mounting a 550 on here and at that point in time I'll change at least the scale on the Y axis to a little bit longer scale. But anyway, to get by with what I've got right now until I upgrade or until I try and mess around with the scales that I've got, I just decided to use the shorter scale that I've got. Uh, the problem is you run out of travel and it'll run the scale reader off of the, or the head off of the uh, bar itself. So I'll show you the the solution I've come up with for now, which I think is going to work fine. For my y-axis, I've used the same mounting system I had. This is the same angle iron bracket that I had before, and it's set up virtually identical. I've got it set up so that the scale's protected by the angle iron, of course. I just mounted it up at the under end. I don't know that you can really see that, but anyway, I just spaced the scale off so it doesn't contact anything on the uh, angle aluminum itself and it's uh, drilled and tapped into the aluminum and we've got a socket head cap screw in there. Now this, the table is pretty much all the way forward so the reader's at the back of its travel here. Now the problem is when we get backed up this way why we're about an inch short of being able to fully come to the back of the table so con consequently the scale's bottomed out and I've still got travel left. So the way I've overcome this is I've got a tube here and I slotted it top and bottom and this little bar right here is would have originally been the, one of the legs on the uh, calipers and it's what I've used as a mounting on all of them. We drill those and, and then screw them to whatever we're permanently mounting them to. In this case what I've done is I've just set it down in here and I built me a little a little tube here. I threaded it at the back and I've got a spring loaded plunger here. So this just sets in here and it's going to provide enough spring tension against that caliper arm that uh, we won't get any movement of that until it actually bottoms out and then the spring will compress that or then the, the uh, reader or the scale head will compress that spring so we get travel. Now we won't get readings off of that uh, to the digital readout or we won't get an accurate reading but it will take up that extra place that extra play in there so we're not bottoming out the scale and damaging anything. So this is the first time I've actually put it together. I've got everything measured to length and uh, then I've taken a my bolt just cut the head off and made it into a slotted screw head 
and it's just going to go right in here, hopefully. Alright, well I had to go back and drill a little hole right here for a uh, for a punch to be able to hold our spring in position. I can still adjust tension on this screw if I need to, which I don't think is necessary. And I'm going to go ahead and mark the position of these clamps. These are just plastic clamps holding it on for now. This is a proof of concept thing. But anyways, we run it back. We've got enough spring tension that's going to hold our, our scale steady against the front. And we'll plug in a scale here in just a minute just to verify that. And when we run out of travel, right there, why instead of it bottoming out that scale and damaging it, what it does is it just moves the scale on back until it bottoms out against the column with our, with our uh, angle aluminum that protects our x-axis scale. When we come back out, we've got that spring tension, brings it right back to that same position, and it uh, works perfect. So. I think that's the solution temporarily, and uh, fairly quick and easy fix. We're holding alignment. There's no problem with any of that. We'll uh, we'll reaffix our wire so it can't move any place, and uh, then once we get our scale head mounted or our digital readout head mounted, why uh, we'll have a functioning digital readout. We come back, and we're going to bottom out right there before we run out of scale travel. So let me get a scale hooked up and we'll see how she works. Alright, let's go ahead and power this digital readout up. The Euro 350, this is revision 4, which makes no difference to anybody or anything. Uh, we're not reading our x-axis for whatever reason. What do we got going here? picking up that x-axis. Oh, I guess I was playing with the z-axis, wasn't I? There we go. We zero everything out. And there, it just shifted into high-speed sampling. And there's our y-axis that we just installed. Let's go ahead and fully bottom it and see what it's going to do here. Make sure we don't pinch, pinch any wires. Okay, then we're just about to bottom out. There we've bottomed out. Let's do 4 0. And there we picked up again. 6239, 6239.5. 6239.5. 6239.5. So it picks it up the exact same place every time. So we'll watch repeatability on that and make sure it zeroes, although for this application in manual machining it's not that big an issue. X-axis should be moving, and we'll have to reset direction on part of these, and then Z-axis. I do notice the z-axis bounces a little bit to where it actually zeroes out. It's the machine itself as it's coming back up rather than anything. I noticed the readouts even before we mounted the digital readout on it. Why? We got a little bit of variation. Anyway, we have a functioning digital readout. So we've got to get it set up, figure out how we're going to mount the head. And uh, then this is one more thing done on this. Okay, well I think we got the digital readout pretty well figured out it's all everything's mounted with the exception of the, the head itself and I think I figured out the mounting for that I've got to run to town tomorrow and see if I've got some see if I can round up a piece of square tubing that I think suits my needs um, anyway the installation so far seems to be rock solid I've run the mill a little bit 
and I've played with the hand wheels and everything, it seems to be solid. You know, I don't see any flutter or movement at all. Um, I'm real happy with it all. I'll, I'll run it for a little bit and watch. Occasionally you run into a ground loop problem or something that way to where your, um, or your digital readout goes kind of wonky, but I've never had an issue with that with uh, any of the digital readouts that I've got running here, any of these Schumatech uh, DROs. So I don't anticipate any problems with it. I think it's it's good. What I'm going to do for a mounting, at least for right now, well, it's going to be a permanent mounting, is I brought, uh, I've dug out this old Craftsman toolbox, and this is actually the first Craftsman toolbox I ever bought. And uh, it's been with me for a long time. I'm going to go ahead and clean it out and clean it up a little bit, put a piece of stainless on for a top. And um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to dedicate this, this box to, I think, basically this mill. But I'm going to take and run a piece of square tubing up the back, and that's going to be my column to mount my digital read off, off of and whatever little accessories I want to mount there. And um, I'm sure we'll run power to that, and that's where we'll, I suspect I'll run, you know, whatever I can find for a piece of tubing that's fairly substantial. I'll bolt it right to the top, and um, then I think I'll pre-drill it and everything for any accessories I want to bolt onto it. I'll figure out a fairly standard hole pattern or probably pair of holes at different heights on it, and that way I can design my mounting points off of that. Um, I'll probably run a power box on the back of it and I'm probably going to pull power off of the mill itself. I've, I pulled the cover off yesterday and was looking at it but I'll have to dig in there to pull 110 power off of it because I want to power the digital readout and I may want it for solenoids or something like that for cooling uh, and I'll probably run something similar to a you know I'll do a homebrew version of a fog buster probably and Maybe I'll solenoid activate that. I don't know yet. But anyway, that's going to be the next thing I think is to get that column built and the digital readout mounted. And that'll take care of that. And from there, I think we'll probably go on to uh, to the power drawbar. So anyway, hopefully if you've got some ideas from that you can use in your shop. And uh, any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, guys, thanks for taking the time to watch.